We're in the shop this morning, another morning, another slab to go through the wide belt sander. Looks like a four board walnut glue up. This fine gentleman here. Hey. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Introduce yourself. Hey, my Kyle Knapp. Kyle Let's Knapp. Table sanded. What's your Instagram? Uh, Knapp.Kyle. Knapp.Kyle, Instagram, check it out. So he brought this uh, beautiful table. So first pass through. We like to make sure we just barely hit it with the sandpaper because if you do take too much, it's a disaster. We've blown the belts on the motor, um, which is not the sandpaper belt, but we actually blew the belts that run the drum. I've already lowered it, Justin. Half a mil. Uh, you can also screw the paper up very easily. The paper's very expensive, as we've uh, recently learned. I just did a new order of paper, and it's about 100 bucks, $120 per piece of paper. So that does start to add up. I got the machine at an auction and it came with 200 pieces of paper, although a lot of it's very high grit that we won't necessarily use. And uh, it was older paper, so a lot of it was kind of folded funny, had some tears in it and rips, so a little disappointing on, on the paper selection that we got with it, but it came with the machine, I really can't complain. So now we've dropped it half a millimeter and we're putting it through again. We're able to see the power that the motors are using. Right here, so we can see the motor's loaded to about 21%, 22. We don't want to see this get over, certainly you don't want to see it get into the red here. Ideally, we're around 50%, 60% is the most we try and run it. It does have two heads. We don't actually lower the back head until we're done. We're just gonna do the very last pass with the back head. So this is registering nothing right now. So main power screen, I go back to the main panel. Click on program, and I'm gonna drop it half a millimeter. So the belt stops, lowers down half a millimeter, starts up again, and they're gonna put it through. All right, Kyle, as always. Thank you very much. No problem. Have a good one. See you later, guys. Yeah. So we had a morning of surfacing a slab for a client through the wide belt sander. Now we have our stacks. Check it out. From the epoxy course that we do on the weekend. We had two stacks. We had two courses in morning and afternoon. We're going to get them close to thickness through the planer. And then we're going to go through the wide belt sander with them. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that now. All right, so I have to admit, this beast of a machine, 60 horsepower, both sides, one pass, it is f***ing awesome. I don't know if Sebastian's gonna bleep that or include that, but there's a little surprise for him. One pass, we cleaned off all the epoxy we needed to. We're gonna head to the wide belt sander now. Mwah. passes down through the wide belt sander. We're gonna drop it down half a millimeter at a time and we'll see how we do.
Wheel Shop update. As I'm always saying, busy, busy day. It is a busy day. Uh, Daniela was here in the morning. We um, put through the, our jointer planer, the artwork pieces, just to take off a majority of the epoxy. And then we went through the wide belt sander. Apologize about this, the noise levels in here, possibly. Justin is over there uh, doing a bunch of dominoes, floating tenons, and some really cool table legs that we have going on that's gonna have a glass top to it. We're pretty excited about that. We're gonna be ebonizing uh, some ash with India ink, which would be pretty, pretty cool. Looking forward to that. So we had the planer running today. We had the wide belt running. Um, we had some relatively precise joinery we needed to cut on the legs that Justin's now doing the dominoes on. So we did out the table saw using the sled and a clamp and, and it was a little bit of a head scratcher to get the setup, but we got, we got it sorted out. So I'll give you a little tour around of what's going on. We just replaced the starter on the telehandler. And this was all just. Just turn it off and then on and let, leave it, let the glow plug be on for a little bit. Um, I guess it depends on what you want to do for pushing a chair in kind of thing. Most of the time we're mounted around uh, 16 inches, maybe 14 inches. Yeah, see mine are be, need to be like right at the end, like I can go, you know, f six inches or so in, but I'm still going to lose a foot in length, right, which makes you elbow to elbow with the person beside you. Yeah, right, because what's your total table length? 60. Oh yeah, relatively short, yeah. This is where, um, obviously it's a different look and a different style, but the, the, the metal legs that are just kind of, you know, straight down or slightly angled and to the bottom and to the top, we use those a lot at, at when we do tables like with the legs right at the end because you can push the chair right through and you can sit at it like that. So lunchtime, shop's nice and quiet. Give you a little walkthrough of what we have going on. Yesterday the vacuum kiln opened up, bam! So we got a lot of wood, we got some beautiful spalted wormy soft maple, some short white oak, and we have a nice 10 foot long, really nice actually, Canadian black walnut bull. Over here, Carol came from, from Simply Piped. She does serving boards, top notch stuff. She picked out a bunch of five quarter walnut, and let's walk through the rest of the shop here. We were busy this morning with the over under jointer planer, as well as the wide belt sander. We have all the Sujibon samples done and I've picked some out for some of the clients. So here's a bunch of the options that we have. The finishes that we're using, Rubio Monocoat. They have one called a Sealer 707 and then the Osmo Oil UV Protection Oil. Both fantastic products, great for their own uses. The Rubio Monocoat especially seals in the char if we're gonna leave it like that. And if we're gonna be doing a brush or a heavy brush, we'll use the Osmo Oil uh, UV protector. You can also do it without a finish. So we have samples without finish also. And Justin's been working on our uh, five-legged pedestal base. Here's a template for it. Then from there, we make our individual templates, just like this, which makes our pieces. We get our pieces together and then we have an individual master. So we're actually gonna be flush trimming to this individual master once we glue up the two singles. So we're moving along with that. We got some here, we got some dominoes, domino holes going in there. Hopefully we get them glued up by the end of the day. Looks like Justin's setting up to get some more done. And we have a beautiful finished walnut tabletop here. We gotta bring this down to the showroom. Check it out, I showed this on my Instagram. Canadian Woodworks, of course. There's some mostly beautiful detailed shots of this one actually is what I showed. So that's it, I'm gonna go down and have my lunch. 
Good news is we got the starter in the telehandler and it seems to be starting perfectly. So we're gonna really hustle for the rest of the day and hopefully um, see what we can do about getting the vacuum kiln loaded up. So here we are loading up the vacuum kiln. Huge maple log. Check it out in the background there. Uh, it gets up to about 60 inches wide and it actually had a really cool burl on the side of it too. And we really don't want to cut that. So it's very uh, interesting, let's say it, that we kind of put a slab in, we drive the whole cart in and make sure it's centered properly. So it's a little bit slow growing process because really we're only designed to drive about 48 inches wide in this kiln although it is possible to do 60 inches max with a little playing around. So it takes a little bit longer and then just to the front of the kiln, it's a little bit shorter. We're gonna be filling up the empty space here with these shorts. Can you believe it? We're almost there. Huge giant maple log almost in the vacuum kiln. We made it fit just barely. Oh, we're busting out some round tubes here. What do we got going on? We're gonna be rolling the slab forward, I guess. This must be to adjust it a bit. Let me know on three. One, two, three. So we have a telehandler, and what that is, is is also called a zoom boom. It has a 50 foot boom, you can see right here. You can lift this up, see him booming. Hey, boom it out a little bit. You can see how it extends. And that actually extends out 50 feet, pretty awesome. We don't usually need the 50 feet max. We can see how it extends. Okay, go back in. And goes right back in. Tilts, does all sorts of awesome, cool stuff. So it really helps us load these slabs on, be precise. You don't need to move the machine to, uh, to move the slab in and out. So we park in a way that we're able to boom out, drop the slab onto the stack, and then boom back in, all without moving the machine itself. So you don't have the slab kind of going like this with the movements of the machine. As you see, we're not exactly on the most level ground. Uh, in fact, we're on possibly the most unlevel ground. So you can see he's gonna be booming out now. Steve's over here, he's gonna give him, give him some, uh, some cues on kind of what to do. As long as we have this lined up end for end pretty well, we can actually place these, you know, probably thousand pound slabs right now uh, fairly easily. So you can see just right there, you know, we're slightly off here by about an inch, but we can shimmy it pretty easily just side by side by hand. Be surprised uh, what you can do. But uh, this machine behind me, wow, does it make our life a whole lot easier. And we have not had it running for, fuck, it's been over a month, I think, because we had some starter issues. And uh, Mr. Paul here was too busy and didn't, uh, didn't ask Troy earlier enough to remove the starter. And then he did it in like 30 minutes or something. So a three week delay in asking him to do it, not a good idea.